Picture a universe where everything is close to being destroyed, a universe with cosmic forces battling each other for all creation. Welcome to the Dark Star skin line in League of Legends, a universe that is non-canon but filled with corrupted champions. The Dark Star universe is a void of destruction where the Dark Star, a sentient or powerful force corrupts anything it touches. Where did it come from? We don't know and that's what makes it more fearful. Cause how can you prepare for the unknown? We do know its goal and it's to remove all creation entirely. Champions that serve the Dark Star are its followers, seeking to achieve the destructive goal. In the main plot there are two main teams, one team of champions that serve the Dark Star and one team that serves the Cosmic Court. They are the good guys and their queen is Ash. On the side of the Dark Star, Thresh is a loyal servant, obsessed with worshipping the star as if it is a god of some sort. Could he be the leader to the army of corruptant champions? Then there is Cho'Gath, created out of nowhere, eternally hungry for living beings. Mortal Emperor Jarvan IV? Corrupted. Karma civilization? Wiped out. Now she devours galaxies to complete the star's biddings. Champions like Kha'Zix, Orianna, Zed and others also follow suit, each with their own galaxy destroying agenda. It's worth mentioning that all of these skins were released years ago and in 2024, five new champions joined the Dark Star ranks. First is Silas and he is driven by a desperate need for help which makes him given to corruption. Zoe, a child with infinite power, reshapes galaxies as if it is a toy she can play with. Kaisa and Yorick also fall into the corruption by the star, however, Dark Cosmic Diana, she is different. As anyone with the name Dark Cosmic, i.e. Dark Cosmic Jin, Lysandra, were originally part of the Cosmic Court but they get corrupted. Although one exception is Dark Star Mordekaiser. His name is different, but his bio tells us he was originally in the Cosmic Court too and got corrupted by the Dark Star. But the Dark Star does not go unchecked, the Cosmic Court led by Queen Ash stands against the darkness. They are celestial beings created to maintain balance. First we have Belvith, the cosmic matriarch who grants champions their cosmic powers like Zion who were saved in his final moments and Nunu and Willem who were chosen for their innocent despite losing everything. Each member has a vital role from Nami who creates planets by scattering Elan vital seeds to Lulu who watches over the stars. Even Varus exists on both sides, Darkstar Varus and Cosmic Varus where Cosmic Varus is a doppelganger and wants to destroy Darkstar Varus. I like this a lot and it's very similar to Varus's canon law with there being two users of the darkened bow Kai and Belma. There is one member within the court who the others do not like and that is Vladimir. He is a good guy but just too arrogant and that led him to being isolated from the others. And finally we have Lux. She is special though as Riot dedicated a whole story to her called Ambitions Embrace which I will read and talk about but I want to mention the Ambitions Embrace tells us the outcome of the universe. Whether the Dark Star wins or the Cosmic Court and this was actually actually decided by the league fan base during an event where players choose who wins the war. I won't spoil it, let me read the story to you. The story starts with Lux. She can feel Thresh getting closer, his dark influence growing stronger by the minute. Thresh speaks to her, urging her to embrace her true calling, to join the Dark Star. Lux resists, her loyal heart to the cosmic court but the pull of the Dark Star is undeniable. Fast forward to Act 2. Lux is now in a tense meeting with other Cosmic Court champions, Master Yi, Kassadin, Zaya, Rakan and Queen Ash. They know something is wrong. Lulu even mentions that Jin and Mordekaiser have been corrupted by the Dark Star but there's no clear plan. Ash hesitates, unsure of how to counter Thresh's possible traps. Ash then gives Lux a vital mission, one that only Lux can fulfill. But here's the twist. While Ash is speaking, Thresh is still in Lux's mind, whispering, trying to turn her to the Dark Star. And the Cosmic Court, they have no idea. Act 3 is all about Lux's internal battle. She's torn between the cosmic light and the alluring darkness. She starts to doubt was she ever truly a part of the Cosmic Court or were they just keeping an eye on her, afraid of what she might become. The final act is where things get wild. The act begins with Lux deep in her thoughts. She is confused as to who is speaking to her, who is this dark voice? But before she can identify it, she sees a flashback of her in the Cosmic Court. She goes back to the meeting in Act 1 and notices things which she didn't see before. She sees the members of the court are scared of her. They were worried about Lux and uncertain on what she might do. Lux then replays hers and Ash's interaction and sees how Ash is potentially seeing Lux as a threat. Lux felt like they kept her in the cosmic court to not keep her in the team, but more so that they can keep a watch on her. This upsets Lux and at the same time the dark voice is convincing her that the cosmic court had her in a cage and the light she had been using as a source of power limited her abilities. Lux gives in. She closes her eyes and then she realizes that the voice who is speaking to her is actually Lux. 
and when she opens her eyes, Zerith, Malphite and Mordekaiser bow to her. Lux has become the Dark Queen. And here's the craziest part. Thresh thought he was leading the Dark Star, but in reality, he's been serving Lux all along. Lux ends the story declaring her intent to hunt down every last cosmic champion, starting with Ash. Interestingly, Riot wrote an alternate ending for Lux's story. In this version, Lux fights the darkness inside her and wins. Instead of embracing the Dark Star, she binds Thresh and the Dark Star itself, reaffirming her place as the light of the Cosmic Court. So what would you choose? Would you let Lux fall to the Dark Star's power or have her stand strong with the Cosmic Court? Let me know in the comments and don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that bell because next we're diving into trivia or what I think is crazy interesting behind or about the lore. Do you remember how I mentioned Mordekaiser was the only champion not named with a dark cosmic title? Well that is because although he was in the cosmic court, he was destroyed and then gets resurrected by Lux in the final act of Ambition's Embrace story. I also did not mention Rust earlier as being in the Dark Star team because I knew it would confuse everyone. But literally yes, Rust is in the Dark Star team, but he actually ends up with Kane, but not Kane in this universe, Kane in the Odyssey universe. I know I'm saying a lot, but let me explain. The Dark Star is able to cross the alternate universes, such as Odyssey and Star Guardian. Rust entered the Odyssey universe, and years later, Odyssey Kane obtained a site which had Rust trapped inside. Yep, kind of similar to Kane's canon lore, but this is all true. And if you want a video on the Odyssey lore, then subscribe and let me know in the comments, and I will get that out as soon as possible. And my friends, this is the end of the video. I hope I explained the law of the Dark Star universe and I hope you enjoyed it too. Let me know how you find this video and I can't lie, it's one in the morning so this will be the outro. Thank you, love you, bye.